Stand by for action. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dave Miller. I am the Unpleasant Blind Guy. The Wayback Commentaries with the Reverend Michael E. Jones, the Underground Professor, continues with content and study suggestions and other issues surrounding the way back. Now, if I was to pick a book from modernity, it would be something like the, Cam- the Capitalist Manifesto by Gary Wolfram, who's a professor at Hillsdale College. And he talks about how capitalism does work and is an argument, uh, and it's in a concise little paperback book. In my back. I can reach it, I hope, without everything falling over. Here it is in the – I'm putting it on Periscope for you to see. And it's a ref, it's kind of like a refutal to the Communist Manifesto, right? Um, but it's understanding the market economy and defending liberty. Now, that's the concepts of things that I look for. It explains the economy, which is one of the things that we really didn't include in any of our lists is uh, economics. We did right. politics, we did freedom, we did uh, republic, but we didn't stick economics in there. And now we could have added Adam <laughs> Smith, but that's a tune that you can use to hold open a, you know, the door to an Abrams tank. And well, that, and so that's where Atlas Shrugged comes in. Yeah. <laughs> yes, now, Atlas Shrugged does do that. But uh, you know, there's a lot of people I have a lot of problems with Anne Rand and her books. I don't personally, but uh, you know, I think right. they're great for what they do. But as far as a pure book on defending capitalism, I've I've seen many that say that's what they're doing. This is the only one that I've seen that actually does it, and it goes through and lists examples. And it's a great little way of of introducing the concepts of capitalism and economics and why it works, and refutes those examples that are often used by the left in showing why it doesn't work. You know, when using it, you know, the people like uh, Sanders and those guys. This is right. a great refutation of it, and and face it, if if the country falls, then capitalism's over, and you know we'll be slaves, and and we'll be in a slave economy again, not a capitalist economy. Right. Yeah. It'll 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 be a collective state of some sort, certainly. Right. Um, a theocracy. <laughs> and, yeah, and 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 what um, you know the one I, honestly I can't think of a lot of books written in modernity that 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 go along. With what you're talking about, and you know, honestly, uh, you know, I think you are. I think you are correct that um, we won't need we won't need books and at that future time that throw tomatoes at uh, at at the government because they're going they're they're already going to be tomatoes being thrown at the government. You know, rotten tomatoes. Um, We'll need we'll need books that actually uh, that actually offer solutions and uh, not just uh, that talk about you know old problems you know stuff that stuff that happened as far as those people are going to be concerned in their great 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 grandfather's times um, you know what I was thinking of um, you know as far as a modern book goes would be uh, you know something like the Road to Serfdom uh, that's by uh, F A Hayek yes that, um, that's another one I was going to mention too so yeah. Anything, and, and wrote, or Thomas Sowell, or Walter E. Williams. <laughs> right, right. Um, books that um, books that, that as 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 you say, Prof. Books that offer frameworks um, in 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 good arguments as to why, uh, for instance, capitalism is the best economic system for the people, as opposed to collective systems. Uh, which always seem to support um, a uh, a well moneyed ruling class on the backs of a uh, of a very large uh, working class. You know, um, books of that nature that are actually of some use. So I see what you're saying when you don't uh, when you when when you're uh, talking about not putting in books by Limbaugh and, and Beck and people like that. And people might do that just because they happen to be fans of theirs. Um, I personally don't think that would be of any use, and you know personally. But um, I hesitate to tell people not to include things, or, or if they do include them, I'd say I, w- I would say that you know they they might want to put in a preface of their own. 
you know, tuck a piece of paper in there or something like that that says um, something along the lines of, all right, this this book was written by Ann Coulter in the year, uh, let's say, 2010, and it it, it regards the, uh, the the political situation in the United States of America and the world as of that year. And that way, people will know that it was that it was something that was written relevant to that time and to that time only. Um, you know, again, this is something that that the future founders are are you know they might glance at it, but I think they're going to get a lot more use out of uh, out of, for instance, the book that you talked about. You know, the uh, you know the civics book that you you referred to. They're going to get a lot more use out of that, and they're going to get a lot more use out of the anti-federalist papers. Yeah. Uh, that, that's just my opinion. Your thoughts? Yeah, I think I think that's a good point. There's actually no book I would ban, but right, there are books that I would put. You know, you got to create triage here. You got to decide what's worth having. You know, what would you, what's worth spending our time and money on? And, and anybody yes. could pick anything and do that. And I wouldn't say that's wrong. But you know, because everything we had that we can add to culture and to society uh, and information is worth it. But we're looking at, at the angle from this show as, as an angle of how to reconstruct a society and cre- recreate civil society with capitalist and Republican ideals. And so right. that's, that's the angle that I looked at on what would I include, what would I have, because there are fantastic books. You know, uh, The Constitutional Reader from Hillsdale's one, but... But, you know, there's all these great books like Friends of Liberty by Nash and Hodges uh, um, would be great. All the James Bond books would be great. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, well, but, but what about that, you know, lead and help and things that, you know, are, would be nice, but that's after civil society's picked up. Well, yes. It, well, you know, one that I'm thinking of, um, you know, what about the minutes to the, uh, you know, to the Constitutional Convention? Oh, um, yes. You know? Didn't we say that? I thought we did say that. Because of no, the debates I, I, on the I, Constitution, the Federalist Papers, any Federalist Papers, you have to have all right. of those. Y- to, yes. Uh, yes, I did put in the Federalist yeah. Papers and the Anti-Federalist Papers, but not, not the actual minutes um, as recorded during the debates. Um, I, I think that would be very helpful. Um, but, you know, it, it's uh, that's that would be something else uh, to, uh, to throw in. Um, you know, so, yes, it and, and you bring up a great point. I say be individualistic in your, in, in your choices, uh, but also realize that um, it's a lot easier to hide something that's, um, that, you know, more or less um, a few feet square than it is to hide something that's the size of a room, um, you know, if, if it comes to a point where you have to hide something. Um, so that's that's why... Your selection of materials might have to be rather small because because that's easier to conceal. Um, you know, and as I said, future future governments that are going to be very totalitarian, it's going to be a lot easier for them to find a book collection that's the size of a refrigerator than it is to find to find one that's you know the size of uh, say a bread maker. So, yeah, the, if, if they get to my house. The book burning will probably be able to be seen from the moon. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's like I've got over five thousand books here. At, uh, yeah. Well, they'd 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 have to bring they'd have to bring the salamander to your place. That's by the way, for people who aren't familiar, what that is. That's a uh, that's the uh, that's the fire engine, the literally fire engine from Fahrenheit four fifty one. Right. <clears throat> yeah. That blows uh, off well, the fire of the hose. <laughs> Yep, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That uh, I think it was. I think it was like you know, uh, fueled by kerosene. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it's a big fire truck, and everybody rides on the on the thing and all that, you know. But uh, then then they get off and and you know, um, you know, uh, pull out the hose and everything, and just 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 you know, blast all the books in the house, um, and then blast the house. Um, <laughs> so for, for good measure. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, can't have can't have you know a house around where there's been all these you know nasty books with these with these you know unapproved ideas inside. Come on, um, but yeah, I, I mean the uh, 
the, the, the choices are, are going to have to be individual, but, um, but I think, I think we both offered some, some good, uh, some good choices. And, um, you know, it's, it's something, it's something that people can do moving forward. If they, you know, um, I like to tell people you're never powerless. Um, there is something that you can do and if nothing else, you can do this, you know, um, and I mean, there are going to be plenty of people who are going to be involved in the more kinetic versions of revolution in uh, the coming generations. Uh, that's going to happen as well. But I would say that in in his way, um, Thomas Paine was every bit as important as George Washington. Yeah, and they all had their that? roles. You remember I did a few shows where I called it the Indispensable Man series, and I pointed out that, you know, Franklin was the indispensable man. Washington was the indispensable man. And without any of them, you know, I don't think we'd have become a country because it took what they did to push the country. You know, pain, if it wasn't for common sense, then Washington's army would have been so demoralized. You know, who knows? We might not have had uh, uh, the victories that came after that. Uh, you know, it, and so there's all these different people had all these different roles. And. I think if you take any one of them away, then we might not be standing here today free, or whatever we are standing here today as. <laughs> well, I think you're right. You know, and, and and I think that people, anybody listening to this, uh, might be thinking, well, okay, I'm just a I'm just a homemaker. Uh, you know, I'm just a, uh, you know, a 40 year old homemaker that, um, you know, yeah, sure, I graduated uh, I graduated high school, but, um, you know, I don't have um, I don't have. I can't go out and give speeches, and um, I don't have a lot of money to go out to rallies. Or, uh, you know, I I don't have it. Uh, I just don't have it in me to uh, run for office and be successful. So I don't feel that there's anything that I can do. And the fact is, uh, yes, you can. There are uh, there are things that you can do that that if not if will not bear fruit today, they they could bear fruit in in a time uh, in a time yet to come. Um, and and I think I think that's important because uh, another thing that we'll have to do um, in the years ahead is we'll have to keep our spirits up, and um, that's going to include bringing everyone in on the revolution. Um, just as just as all of us are part of the militia of the United States of America, and that's why we have the Second Amendment. Um, you know, you could say that um, all of the people will be the Minutemen of the new revolution, even even if all they do in their lifetimes is gather together the materials and teach what they can, and then pass those on. Uh, after after they're gone, it'll be it'll be their kids' turn and their kids' turn after that. Prop, um, there are you know this. There are um, probably at this point billions of people throughout history uh, that we'll never know. Each of them in their day did what they could to move people towards personal liberty. They they knew they knew what the goal was, um, and they knew they'd never see it in their lifetimes. But in their day, they did their little bit, whatever it was, to move us to move us to the point where we started the American Republic. Uh, we'll never know those people, but I'm, I'm eternally grateful to them, all of them, um, for what they did. And um, I'm, I'm perfectly content at this stage um, to die and be forgotten as long as some people use the idea that I've thrown out there and pass it on and, and, uh, and, and do something and maybe relieve some suffering. Uh, for a generation or two of people in in, in the future, uh, you may not be recognized. Your name your name may not be in the history books. In fact, it probably won't. But you'll know it, and that's the most important thing. Yeah, you that's think, right. What do you think of that? Now you think about that. Of all the people that have died, how many people are still remembered? Uh, by most people, <laughs> you know, outside of a handful of presidents and serial killers, uh, not very many. But their concepts, their ideas, their fights lived on. And 
what you described would have described most of this country for most of their lives. You know, they spent teaching uh, the value of freedom and liberty and the limited government. And it is only uh, – dang, there's one less fly in this world. Call PETA. Oh, man. <laughs> Sorry. That's, Wait a minute. That might be a I the back door open, okay. and I got like five flies in here now coming from the back door. Um, <laughs> but the uh, – but you're right. Now, it wasn't until the welfare state was created that that paradigm shifted and that now we have, you know, 40, 50 percent. Uh, somewhere I saw a statistic that 53 percent of the country still works uh, and the rest are on welfare. So, you know, there's a little over half of us are still promote, promoting liberty and freedom and the other half are uh, promoting, you know, cradle to grave government uh, comfort and and I'd imagine that there's not even half of those people still promoting freedom. There's probably a lot of them that are willing to give up any time now because <laughs> they're just tired of feeding and funding uh, in dependence off of their paycheck that they have never met or heard of, and uh, which is exactly what we're doing. But, yes, uh, for the future, you never know. Poss- you know, I, I think back on those shows I've done where I've said something and then I've gotten a message back, uh, one in particular that, still chills me. Uh, I, I talked about uh, when I was severely crippled, you know, and I go after things like uh, doctor-assisted suicide, and I was actually in a position where I considered that, and then I considered my own suicide, forget the doctor, and I discussed with the audience what I had gone through with that, and um, uh, you know, it was a completely vulnerable thing to do and say and I don't even know why I did it but I felt compelled to do it so I did and then I got an email back that there was somebody on her bed and she turned on the computer for background noise on blog talk and randomly selected a show and it was mine she'd never heard it and she heard my show and it saved her life and uh, so you don't know who you're here who's hearing you when you teach or talk sometimes uh, like you're doing it over the radio but your message it may not even affect those that are your primary audience, people that are listening to you, but they might go out and say something and it affects somebody that makes a difference. And so, you know, just because you don't think you're being effective or that the world will know who you are in the future uh, is a, a reason not to push this or to do it or, you know, to or to protect your freedom now. Right. You, you do it. You do it because you do it because you know it's right. Um, I mean, it's 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 just like um, oh, I don't know. It's, it, you you've used this example yourself. Um, it's just like um, a cashier gives you too much change. Well, you know, you can just walk off, but you don't. You know, you go back in and you and you go, hey, you know, you gave me like you know a buck too much here. Um, that, does it does it uh, change the world? No, it doesn't. But you know, you know, you did it because it's the right thing to do. You and know, it's you fun to bring up that example, Ag. Because I've had a lot of people tell me that story has made them feel guilty and <laughs> when they go out and do stuff and they're like, oh, crap, the professor told that story. And, uh, I think that's funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah. it's it's what people, uh, you know, and this is this is a problem, I think, with uh, with our culture. And who knows, this could even be intentional on the part of the Fabian socialists, uh, you know, that somehow every – Every person deserves to have their name up in lights. Um, you know, they deserve to be recognized nationally and internationally for um, for what they do, and they deserve to be remembered until the end of time. Um, and it's usually it's usually for nothing, and that's why you have people. Uh, you know, that's that's why you you get kids um, on YouTube uh, spraying themselves in the face with fair mace. When which if you've never watched any of those videos, that's just just funny as anything. But <clears throat> what they don't, uh, what young people aren't being taught today, is that um, recognition only has to come from within, and 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 from God, you know. And and if you know it, then God knows it, and you're cool. You don't have to have you don't have to have recognition from your peers, your friends, your family. You know, I mean, almost nobody in my family listens to my show. Um, <laughs> you know. You don't have to have any of that as long as long as as you know that you've done it and you've done what you've done for for good reasons because it's it's the right thing to do. Um, this is a message that isn't 
being given enough to young people. In fact, the opposite message is being given to them. Um, and that if, if you talk to, uh, to some of these uh, psychologists out there about some of the mass shooters, you know, they say, well, that's the reason that they go out and do this because, because they know they're going to get, they know they're going to get like, you know, maybe a day's coverage on the national news. Um, never mind the other implications. They're just, they're going to be famous and, and they're going to be recognized and people are going to know their names. Um, now, of course, that has pervaded our our culture so much now that people do these horrible things, and uh, two weeks later we forget who they were. Um, you know, so it's it's beginning to have an opposite effect. But if you uh, if you can teach the young that um, their own deeds, their own works, if recognized by themselves, are going to be enough, then you'll have people that are prepared to do the right thing just because it's right. Not necessarily because they're going to get any kind of recognition. I mean, no oh God, you and Ken blow me away in the ratings, you know. But I still, I still do my 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 stupid little show because I know it's the right thing to do. Yeah, I only have tens of listeners. <laughs> well, you got more than you think. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you also on family. My parents look at me like I'm. I've grown a third eye when I ask if they've heard my show. <laughs> and my none of my family I think listens to me anymore. Every now and then God's girl does and once in a blue moon my oldest daughter tunes in to hear. But uh you know, you know the problem is with family is they're too close to you. They think they already know everything you're gonna say and and that you're crazy, so <laughs> why bother Wasting the time listening, and, and same with coworkers and things. You know, they think they know you, and, but that's the way that is. That uh, that's the way that is. Now, oh. go ahead. No, 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 no. Go on. Go on. Oh, uh, I was going to say, uh, but the important thing is, is what we're doing now is encapsulated digitally. And so our shows are being captured, they're being um, preserved electronically. And so as long as we have, uh, you know, Internet and Wi-Fis and computer systems and, you know, as long as the world doesn't end with EMP strikes, then those things should be around and accessible. Uh, But what we're talking about is if something like that does happen, you know, the Muslims decide that Muhammad didn't have electricity, so no one will, and they turn it all off, then um, uh, then where will you get this information? And this is what started our conversation about this and, and where you go. And and this is why we've been, we've been doing this series, I think, anyway. That, that is it in part. Um, you know, I mean, certainly, certainly we can use the internet for as long as we're able. And then, uh, you know, I know that I save my shows to CD, you know, to DVD once in a while, and just just to make sure that they're preserved in that way. Um, you know, and 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 I think other people who who host their own podcasts should do the same thing. If nothing else, the DVD can be copied and and shared out. Um, you know, but what what. What the series does, what the way back does, whether it's in a series or you listen to the whole bloody thing, the whole 34 minutes of it, um, is it points out that that um, if the internet is somehow shut off to people like us, um, that isn't the end of the story, and it doesn't have to be the end of the story. Uh, we can continue on with uh, with other ways, other means, other methods, and the message can be brought forth, and it will be. But, of course, for now, while we have this resource, we'll use it as much as possible and clue, and clue in as many people as we possibly can to how to do these things because it's important to do that. Right? Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm trying to create an underground professors and professorettes. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Yes, sir. And and, uh, and I'm not, you know, I'm not, um, <clears throat> you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to create unpleasant blind guys because, um, you know, <laughs> my blindness is hereditary. So I, I decided on not doing that myself. 
Uh, but uh, certainly, you know, if I can, I want to create. I want to create people who question everything, including me. Um, you know, oh, exactly. I, I want to create. I want to create critical thinkers. Because because our society is certainly not doing that. Our society is creating people um, who who think the way that society tells them to, and if they deviate from that, then they're called haters or racist or Islamophobes or um, whatever new um, buzzword that the political elites can have their social scientists come up with to make a person feel bad that they're actually questioning uh, the government or the media or um, or anything else. Yes. <laughs> the um, way back, I think, is absolutely well named, uh, and and it's sad because you know you would think, Agador, we see the writing on the wall, we see what's coming. And it would seem to me so much easier to, you know, to save it than to have to rebuild it and recreate it. Uh, but yes. it really doesn't turn out that way, does it? No, it doesn't. And and, and I'll, I'll I'll tell you something. I'll t- I'll give you the genesis of, of the title of it. That's it for this time. Next time. The Wayback Commentaries for 2015 concludes with final thoughts from myself and the Underground Professor. Agador and the Underground Professor, both sitting high atop a double rainbow, gaily swinging our feet over the hermitage of North Texas's liberal conservative studies. This has been copyrighted in the year of your Lord 2015. Via Concarni for the Agadorable fans and via Contoodles for mine. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for listening, and may your God go with you. Goodbye. The Unpleasant Blind Guy is copyright 2015. Anno Domini.